All right, Martin, it's so exciting to have you here and, and talk about you know, cloud economics. Everybody's talking about the different choices in cloud and you and Sarah Wong just did this really in-depth analysis about the economics and looking at public cloud versus alternatives. So tell us a little bit like why did you even like study this in the first place? Uh, so the genesis was actually very simple, uh, which is I sit on a bunch of boards <laughs> and I started noticing that like, um, you know, the number one line item by far uh, was cloud spend. Uh, and it was one of these things where we're like, oh, like over time it's going to go away, but it like tended to just get bigger. And when I talk about like number one line item, I'm talking about like maybe like, you know, 50% of COGS. And so based on that private market experience and, you know, all public companies were once private companies, Sarah and I asked the question, like, is, you know, like in the last six years, we've had something like 126 companies IPO and all of them are cloud native. And this is a pretty new thing. So we just asked the basic question, like, is this, you know, just the companies that I know about or is this everybody? And so we just asked the very simple question, how is the cloud impacting the economics of cloud native companies? But that was, that was the beginning. That's yeah, that, that it seems like something that all, all these companies are, are wrestling with. And so it seems like it generated a lot of controversy. There were there are certainly tweets flying everywhere, people arguing. And, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the, the big takeaways from from what you found when you actually dug into the data points. Sure. OK, so the first thing to I think <clears throat> that's important to stress is that this is a very new phenomenon. So like the cloud has been around for a long time. Public cloud companies have not. <laughs> like that are actually built totally on the cloud. I mean, literally maybe five years new. Uh, and in like, you know, one of his, history's greatest bull markets ever. So what we did is we looked at public software companies that were cloud native. We looked at 50 of them. And we asked two questions. The first question we asked was, if you look at the COGS, what percent of the COGS is cloud? Now, remember prior to cloud native companies, cloud was some back office thing. It wasn't a part of COGS, so it impacted the economics differently, right? So this is just software companies. This isn't banks, this isn't old IT. This is just, just you know public software companies that are cloud only. So we asked what percentage is COGS? And then we said, and then we asked the second question is, is um, you know, if you could reduce that, how does that impact share price? So here are the results. The first, and both results to me are just totally staggering. So the first result is, is if you draw uh, the, across these 50 companies, on average, 50% of their cards is cloud. <laughs> 50 <laughs> so on average, uh, across <clears throat> 50 companies. Uh, and by the way, the way that we did this is we kind of, we looked through rest ones and stuff at the community cloud spend. I mean, we actually spent a lot of time doing this. And then the second result was, if you reduce that by half, however you decide to do that, right? Like, let's say that you optimize your code or, you know, you pull, you know, you repatriate some subset of workloads or whatever you do, it increases the share price across those 50 companies by about a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> so oh, if you extrapolate so those results, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a, these, these numbers are just so huge. So if you extrapolate those results to the industry, it's a $500 billion to a trillion dollar problem. And this is like market cap that's being captured by the cloud, assuming you can reduce your cloud spend by 50%. Now you, you've talked a couple of times about COGS, which is cost of goods sold. Um, yes. So this is, this is the raw cost that these companies account for across everything that goes into taking their product and service um, basically out to delivering it to the customer. Now, um, one of the things that I noticed in the conversation that happened around this, uh, I, I saw that people were pushing back and they were saying that the only thing to prioritize and optimize in terms of you know, getting a product or service to the customer is basically time and speed. And that, um, you know, by, even though this is a very high cost, you know, 50% uh, on these public clouds, it was helping them with, with speed to market, with time to market. Um, and that, that seemed to be like a pretty common uh, sort of response and, and, and counterpoint to, to some of your findings. How do you respond to that? What, what's your feeling on that? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> I mean, for those of, 
of you who are listening that don't know my background, like, you know, <laughs> I was part of Cloud Wars 1.0. <laughs> so Cloud Wars 1.0 was cloud versus internal IT, right? And so let's say, you know, you're at a fortune, you know, whatever, 1,000, um, you know, and you need to get, you know, some uh, a desktop, uh, you know, you work with the internal IT, like, like, this, like this is kind of like the framing of the first Cloud Wars and is a very common one. And, and here it totally makes sense to kind of consolidate and, you know, have professionals do it, et cetera. But again, the you know the study that we're doing are are all these public cloud companies that are these very very large companies, and to to reduce the discussion to something as simple as well, you should just be focusing on growth. It would be the same thing as saying you should just take on technical debt, right? <laughs> Some level it doesn't like make much sense, right? You know, and what's interesting is because the economics change so much, actually reducing cloud is an argument for growth. So let me explain that. So, for example, if you reduce cloud costs by 50%, for most of these companies, you free up one to two billion dollars uh, of market cap that will flow through to cash, like, like cash money, which you can use to hire and invest in growth, right? And so the actual economics are so acute, you can make an even stronger argument that the rate to grow is actually to cut your cloud cost so you can have the spend to do that. And the reason that I brought up cloud one dot arguments is because like I think most of the discussion around the piece was like the old discussion around mm -hmm. cloud versus internal IT, which had nothing to do with the piece. The piece is like Cloud Wars 2.0, which is cloud versus SaaS. And I think that's where the interesting discussion is. Yeah, so it seems like you're the analysis is pretty compelling at these really large public uh, sort of cloud native companies that it is, as you said, a very new phenomenon. But And perhaps when you're really small and getting started out, yeah, public cloud, swipe your credit card, iterate, like the, it's not a big economic issue, but is there a crossover point in your mind? You know, it seems like you found that sort of the clear case at these 50 largest and then, you know, perhaps you would agree if you're really small, iterate, you know, it's not a big cost, but is there, is there some sort of crossover point in your mind? So, so, I mean, to me, the, 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 the interesting setup for the discussion is if you're a large public cloud company, on average, your costs are 50% of the cloud, right? It's impacting your market cap by a few billion dollars. And, and that market is controlled by an oligopoly of three companies whose margins have increased from 18% to 30% over the last 10 years, right? And so it's quite unlikely that like you'll get much margin extraction out of that. I mean, oligopolies just don't work that way. So then the question is, is you know, to your point is, is what do you do about it? Is this something that you worry about early? Is this something that you just let the market take care of? Like, like what do you actually do about it? And, and I don't think there's actually a good answer for that. However, we are starting to see signs in the industry of people recognizing it um, and thinking about it quite early. So, for example, Suhail, who is the Suhail, who is the founder of, you know, Mixed Panel, has created a new company called Mighty for exactly this reason: building their entire hardware stack. If you've watched what Cloudflare is doing. Cloudflare is taking direct aim at AWS and announcing things like R2, which is kind of an S3 competitor by doing, you know, egress pricing. And so, again, I think the question is less, you know, if you are doing a startup, should you or should you not use cloud? The answer, of course, is yes, you must use cloud for sure. Like, that's the only way to do modern development. I would never recommend anybody do not use cloud unless you're a core infrastructure component then maybe you should think earlier about that. And then, and then once you start getting at scale, you may want to start looking at these alternatives. Like there are now these kind of niche clouds that are focusing on cost optimization in certain areas that you may want to consider using. And so I, I you know, I, I don't think, you know, the, the purpose of this piece was not to tell SaaS vendors to repatriate, it's to say that you've got a trillion dollars that are locked into this unsteady truce with an oligopoly and something's gonna happen and it's gonna be big and a lot of spend is gonna be moving around and I'm all for it. So um, one last question for you, you know, this, this piece was awesome. Uh, thank you to you and, and Sarah for all of the time and, and analysis that you put into it and publishing it and starting this awesome discussion. Um, I think one of the reason why it got so much reaction from so many people was that it, in some ways, it sort of defied conventional wisdom 
that uh, that you were talking about where you know just it's just accepted that you go and you go to a hyperscaler and that's it and that's all you ever have to think about again um so i think that was great to, to put that out there my my question for you now is what other kind of pieces of conventional wisdom do you think there are especially in the tech industry that are changing or that are wrong or that you know what's what's the next firestorm you're going to start martin <laughs> Well, I, mean, I could go through the firestorms I have been starting, right? I mean, like the, the, the one previous, I'll actually work backwards because I'm not quite sure what the next one is. I, I, I kind of talk about them as they come up. The one previous to this was I, I made the statement that kind of irritated a lot of people, which open source doesn't really matter anymore. And the reason I said that is because I think the primary way of monetizing infrastructure as, as a service these days and as a service, the hard part about that is less code and more kind of operational stuff. And so, you know, a lot of the, you know, um, top infrastructure companies are strictly closed source companies. We're just talking about the cloud. The cloud is, is almost strictly closed source, right? If you look at AWS or GCP. I mean, like, you know, if you ran it, like a piece of infrastructure, um, you know, 10 years ago, like the amount of open source that you touched is, relatively is much more than now. Like if you run a workload on GCP, how much of that's actually open source? <laughs> like way less than if you're running on Red Hat. So that was one. And then before that, um, uh, and I believe this very strongly, you know, like I just think that we think of data as this magic thing and we say things like, oh, data network effects and data is the new oil. And I just think it's the wrong analogy. I don't think data has network effects. I think that companies that rely on data actually have diseconomies of scale. <laughs> like the more data you have, like the worse your economics are. Um, and so I think that you need a trait like unit economics is a first class thing if you're dealing with data. So those are three contrary positions I've held in the last two years. And then the next one, listen, I, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Well, thank you so much. You know, we, we've had you on the weekly show before. We'll definitely have you back on to talk about data, debate the, the open source imperative or not. And, <laughs> <laughs> All these other great topics. I mean, people are going to love to uh, to get it and mix it up and, and debate with you. We'll, we'll have you back on for that show. But thank you so much for joining the, the keynote today. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank, thank you so much.